All right. Well, today we're going to try to figure out um, two different ways, or I'm going to show. Okay. Today I'm going to show you two different ways of solving for the acceleration of an of an object rolling down a ramp. Um, this will allow us to find the acceleration down the ramp. It'll also help us to find the final velocity down the ramp, which is something we're actually going to do in the end. So to start off, um, we have an object that's going to roll down the ramp, and we need to go back to a couple of things that we did with regular ramps. So I'm going to go over to Publisher here, and here you can see I have the ramp where I have changed the angle, and if you'll notice, this angle as well is increasing, and also the force down the ramp is increasing. Another way of showing that, here notice this is the weight, here's the horizontal and vertical, and watch as I turn it. I don't know why I just did that, so here we go. Now notice this angle and this angle increase, that would be the ramp, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. All right. So we now know at this point that if this is the weight coming down and if this is the perpendicular to the surface, then this angle and this angle are the same. Well, if I draw one more line, and I draw it right here, I guess I should make it the same thickness or something, there we go, then this angle is also theta. That means that this force right here down the ramp on a regular object would be mg sine theta. However, we are not using a regular sliding object. We are using torque. But it is important that we have that these two angles are the same. So now, torque. Torque, which is like Newton's second law for rotation, it is a vector, equals R cross F. If you haven't done cross product yet, you'll get to that at some point. I don't have time to do that right now. But basically, this means perpendicular components. Uh, we generally, for pre-AP, write it as F D sine theta or F perpendicular to the distance. But you know, sometimes it's difficult to find the perpendicular force to the um, axis or parallel to um, the lever. In this case, that's the same because we're actually pivoting right here. We're not, uh, sorry, we're torquing about this point even though it pivots here. So I've made this bigger and let's go down and take a look at this. If I zoom in on this point right here and I call that my pivot, well, if this say is the center of the uh, center of mass of the circle, or in this case we're going to do a disk, okay, and here again is straight through the point where it's actually rotating, and here's theta, which we know to be the same as the uh, same as the ramp. Well, we can also do something right here. This is the perpendicular distance. This right here, I do this called the moment arm. I'm not sure if that's the actual notation, but it works fine. The moment arm is the perpendicular distance um, from the pivot point to the acting force. Well, what is this acting force? This is mg, and this is my perpendicular distance. Well, if torque, if torque equals my perpendicular distance times my force. In this case, this perpendicular distance is opposite the angle, so that will be R, this is my hypotenuse, it's the longest one, R sine theta times mg. I now have my torque. All right. So I come up here and torque equals um, R sine theta times mg. Well, this also equals the Newton's second law for rotational objects is I alpha. I is the moment of inertia, which is your, its resistance to change of motion or resistance to turning. Well, let's go down here and look at this. For a disk, I around the center of mass, here's the center of mass, equals one-half mr squared. 
But this is not this is not being torqued about the center of mass, it's being torqued about the pivot. So now we have to use what's known as the parallel axis theorem. The parallel axis theorem There it is. Parallel axis theorem is I about some point parallel to your center of mass equals it around the center of mass plus m h squared, which is the parallel distance to the center of mass. And since these two are parallel, that distance h is actually r. So I equals what we already found before, 1 half m r squared plus m r squared which becomes uh, 2 halves mr squared. So 1 half plus 2 halves equals 3 halves mr squared. So now we have one more part of our puzzle. So let's put in what we know. Equals 3 halves mr squared times alpha. You know, it'd be kind of nice to know the acceleration of the center of mass down this ramp. We have out, we have alpha, so let's go down here and do one more. For non-slip conditions, meaning that it's not sliding or uh, static friction is acting, then A of the center of mass equals R alpha. You can prove this by using units. This is mR squared equals m times radians per second squared turns out that radians are actually unitless, so we have meters per second squared, meters per second squared, solving for alpha equals A over R. Plugging that in, let's give us our whole equation. R, I'm just going to put the sine theta out to the outside. Why? I don't know, just felt right. 3 halves M R squared A over R. Now let's look. We have an M here and an M here. The M's cancel. One R cancels here, another R cancels here. So this gives us something rather important. The mass and the radius don't matter. This is why if you were in the lab you should have seen that um, all disks went faster than all hoops and all spheres went faster than all disks for that reason that the radius and the mass don't matter. So let's go ahead and solve all this. Uh, R's and M's cancel, so I get G sine theta equals 3 halves, M's and R's all cancel, equals A. So my acceleration down the ramp is 2 thirds G sine theta. Well, that's an important fact. But what if I wanted to find the velocity at the bottom of the ramp? And just because we're going to do this, uh, well, I guess let's just go on to this. We're going to do something later on, and we'll need that, that amount. So we have an equation, Vf squared, that would be our velocity at the bottom of the ramp, equals Vi squared plus 2A delta x, which in our case is the length of the ramp. Our final velocity we're looking for equals our initial velocity. Let's assume it was at rest plus 2 times 2 thirds g sine theta, which we just found. And let's call our distance around the ramp just d. So our final velocity equals the square root of 4 thirds g d sine theta. And we're going to come back to that um, in our next thing. And actually, um, Let's get rid of this g, d, this d sine theta. I'm going to need a little bit more space here. So let me get rid of all this stuff. What if, because we're going to do this in the next time, we call this distance h. So let me draw another quick triangle here. All right, so if this is our triangle again and we call this d, theta, and h, we can see that h is opposite. So h equals d sine theta. See that d sine theta? We can just put an h. Square root of 4 thirds g h. And we're going to come back to that in the next video, or actually the second half of this. We just found out in the first half by using torque 
that this would be our final velocity at the bottom of the ramp. Let's check that with energy. We know at the top that it will have potential energy, which in AP physics we use U, and it will have kinetic energy at the bottom. But it won't just have linear kinetic energy, meaning it won't just be moving forward, it will be spinning as well. So we'll have U equals our translational or linear uh, kinetic energy, meaning forward motion, plus rotational kinetic energy. Well, this is simply MGH, that's simple enough. Our translational kinetic energy is what we already know, one-half mv squared, and our rotational kinetic energy is now one-half i omega squared. Now, here's where uh, I made a mistake a couple of times. What is this i this time? Before, we had three-halves mr squared because we said that it was rotating about this point. Well, that's true if you're you're torquing it. But if you look at its motion down the ramp, it's actually rotating about its center of mass. So this is going to be I of the center of mass, which for a disk is just m one half mr squared. This right here, yeah, omega equals v over r. Let's prove that. Well, this is just going to be radians per second, and this is going to be meters per second divided by meters, which is uh, just per second. Let me just show you that the easier way. You've got radians per second, that's omega, and then let's put meters per second over here for V. Well, where do you have to put meters to make this? Over here. So that's where R goes. So R times omega equals V, or omega equals V over T. Now let's put all of this together. We get MGH equals one half mv squared, which is the velocity at the bottom of the ramp, plus one half, here we go ahead and put in this, our moment of inertia for a disk around its center of mass at this point, times v squared over r squared because it's squared. And what do we notice again? The r's cancel and the m's cancel. You should already know that if you drop an object, it doesn't matter if it's a heavy or light object, neglecting error resistance. And here again, an object going down a ramp, the mass doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of that. We get GH equals one half V squared plus, looks like one fourth uh, V squared. And of course, this is the same as two fourths. So we get two fourths plus one fourth V squared equals GH, which equals um, three quarters v squared. Now let's go ahead and sub and solve for v. Looks like I have just enough room. Let me go ahead and remove some of this stuff here. And solving up here, I have four thirds gh equals v squared. Take the square root v at the bottom of the ramp equals four thirds. GH, which is exactly what we got using the torque method. Now, of course, this is easier because we're using scalar quantities. Things you have to remember again, there will be rotational inertia. I, in this case, is where it's spinning around. It's spinning around its center of mass. When you're using torque, you have to use the parallel axis theorem because you're not torquing from here. Because the force acting on the object is acting right through the center as it were, but it's actually rotating about that point. That's where it's being pulled down by gravity. Again, we got the same answers.